Okay, I don't know if you can see this, but this is the sickest balcony I have ever seen at a house. We're at the top of a seven-story, a seven-flat in Boulder. Is that what, Big Al, is that what it is? A yes, seven, a seven, seven, seven stories. A seven-flat? Yeah. Seven we have three levels. Look at this view. Look at this, these mountains. But you can like see over like the whole, over <laughs> the whole neighborhood. I know what you're thinking. The new place is Boulder, Colorado. And the answer is no. Although I do love Boulder, and if you're ever gonna go, you need to stay at the Airbnb called The Castle B. I'll link it in the description below. I was just there for business this week, and we stayed in The Castle B. Just an incredible, cool, awesome place. Only a couple blocks from Pearl Street, right in the heart of where you wanna be in Boulder. Man, I need the shade, holy cow. So I've started including some stuff from my work life in these videos because a lot of you guys ask me what I do. I actually work for this company right here, Launch Digital Marketing. I'm the Vice President of Digital Strategy. We're located in Naperville, Illinois. But don't take that as any kind of hint to where I'm moving to because where I'm moving to is somewhere completely different that you'll never guess. So Jake's gonna help me out today because as you guys know, I'm moving and so because of that I can't take any propane tanks on our moving truck and I'm out of propane So what does that mean? Uh, I gotta help you. Yeah, I can't edge. I can't weed whack nothing. Yeah, are you gonna charge me? No <laughs> He didn't look too enthusiastic about that So that's what we got going on today in addition to a few other things around the around the lawn care nut house Okay, so a lot of you guys have been asking for a video on grub worms now, that's another one of those things that I just don't have in my lawn, at least not right now, because it's just a little bit too early. The other thing is, before we talk about grub worms, because inevitably we're going to talk about how to kill them, right? I want you to understand again that I practice integrated pest management. And what that essentially means is I don't use chemical or unnatural means to treat a pest unless I feel like it's going to negatively affect the use of my primary crop, which in this case is turf. I have to determine are grub worms a threat to my crop or my lawn. So to make a long story short, I get grub worms in my lawn every single year. Year. They just are not in high enough numbers to do any damage to my turf. And in fact, in the 11 years I've lived here, I've never had to treat my lawn for grub worms once. But that doesn't mean you should. Now, another thing to think about is shady versus sunny. You're not going to have grub worm problems in a shady area. So don't waste the money and don't waste the extra chemical by throwing it in shady areas. So I do have a very old video on this channel, though, where I did find some grub worms back when I worked for the big lawn care company. I filmed it on an old iPhone 3. But I'm going to go ahead and show you some of that video here because you can see the extensive damage that was done to this lawn. So if your lawn is well irrigated and still green in the summer, heavy, heavy sun or straight sun all day long, and you feel like you're just getting healthy, you're not super thick, you're not super vigorous, you're just getting there, then a grub worm treatment may be right for you. For all the details though, let's go back inside the studio and let me give you the whole lifestyle of the grub worm so that way you can understand how to prevent or kill them. All right, so today, let's talk about Grub worms. So here we are, familiar soil line. And then of course, and of course, as you know, we also have turf. And this is my turf here. And this is probably your turf here. Eh, we'll give you a little credit. Maybe this is your turf here. And then of course, whenever you have turf, you also have root system. Every grass plant has to have a root system. All right, so there we are. So we got roots and we got turf, grass. All right, so let's get our bearings here. So this is January and February, okay? And then we're gonna say this here is April, May, June. And then we're gonna say, of course, that this is September, October right here, and this is November, December over here. Make sense? So we're gonna kind of break things up by these kind of months. 
Okay, so now for purposes of this video, we are going to go ahead and start right here in the June time frame. And we're going to start with what is called a Japanese beetle, also called a mast chafer beetle. They have little wings on the back that probably looks like a ladybug, but these are um, mast chafer beetles, so they can call Japanese beetle, also called June bug, also called June bug. And the June bugs are living in the soil, and at this time, they are ready to emerge. And so when June comes and we get a lot of good sunlight and we get a lot of rain in the spring, it kind of wakes these guys up. You'll see why here in a second. And they kind of start to come out of the soil and they fly out and fly away. That's my best rendition of a June bug. And they fly away and they fly all around in June and July. So the Japanese beetles, June bugs, mass shaper beetles, they fly around in June and July. And they'll, they'll munch on your trees and your shrubs, like your river birch. This is my best way of drawing a river birch. Um, I also see them on purple plum. Um, I've seen them on uh, Rosa Sharon and roses in general. They're all over roses. This is horrible. And they chew on roses and they eat and they cause all kinds of problems, okay? Now, the other thing that June bugs do while they're out flying around is they mate and they lay eggs in the lawn. And that's typically going to be in July and August, which we don't have represented here. They're going to lay their eggs in the lawn. So they're doing all this damage flying around and then they lay eggs in the lawn. And those eggs hatch and they become grub worms. This is my best rendition of a grub worm. They look like a little shrimp kind of under the ground. Those grubs, they feed on the root system of the lawn through July, August, and into September. And that's what they do. They crunch down the roots, and that's how they make their diet, and that's how they grow. And of course, as you can imagine, when those roots begin to die, sometime in September and October, depending when the lawn comes out of summer dormancy, if it was in dormancy at all, you'll start to see brown spots in the lawn. And those are going to show up in like September or October. Parts of the area of the lawn will just die. But what happens is we get our first freeze and these guys bury down deep. So then the grub worms, they go down deep. And so then they're all living down here underground. They've been eating your grass roots all summer, all late summer, early fall. And then they're here over winter. So the following year, these grubs are down underneath the soil and they've been kind of buried there, hibernating all winter. And then once we get into March and April and the temperatures start, these guys start to come back up towards and migrate up. Now they will do a little bit of feeding in the springtime here, but it's not typically enough to hurt the lawn because the lawn is growing, because the lawn is growing so vigorously in the spring from all the rain that we get. It's, oh my God, blue, because that looks like a better color. It's growing so vigorously that this little bit of feeding that these guys do here in the spring is not gonna make an issue. The reason that's important is because you don't need to treat for grub worms in the spring. It's one of the biggest... It's one of the biggest misconceptions that I find. You don't treat for grub worms in the spring. So anyway, so those guys come up and then they start to follow this exact cycle all over again and they emerge as June bugs. So you can kind of see, if you look very carefully, you can see this pattern, right? They're up from the ground in the spring and then they emerge in the summer and then they lay more eggs and then they feed on your lawn all during the late summer and fall and then they go back down again and the process starts all over. You kind of understand that? If you can see that life cycle, that's the life cycle of the grub worm or the June bug or the mass chafer beetle. Okay, so then the question always says, Alan, when do we treat for grub worm? If we don't want them to do this damage beginning in July and August and starting to show itself in September and October and into November, what do we do? And the truth is, we need to put down a preventative and we need to put it down before the grub worms start to feed. So right in here, we need to put down a preventative to stop those grub worms. So that's gonna typically be June, where I live. If you live further south, you're probably gonna need to treat a little bit earlier in May. If you live a little bit further north, you can wait until late June. But typically June, is when you want to treat for grub worms. Now, couple things with the preventatives. We used to use a product called Merit. It's what they used in Scott's Grub X and everything else. There's some newer chemistry out that lasts a little bit longer and um, has a little bit less of a rate and has a little bit what you might call safer rating for the environment, a low toxicity type rating. So that's something you might want to check out. But either way, you want to make sure that what you buy, if you're applying in June, is exactly that, a preventative. Prevent. I think you can see I spell that preventative, right? And put that down right there in June. One time, that's it. It will last all the way through the feeding season. And typically the way that these work, just so you know, is they have to be watered in. Must be watered in. Let's put that up here. If you do not water your preventative in, it won't work. Watered in. We'll call it I N in, like watered in, like a motel, right? So maybe you'll remember it. The reason you water it in is because it has to get inside the root system of the plants. The product has to get inside there. So when the grub worms start to munch, it will activate. And the way most of these activate is they actually cause the grub worms to lose their appetite. The old school merit was what was called a neonicotinoid, which if you understand that word, it understands it sounds like nicotine. Nicotine, when you smoke cigarettes, it makes you 
you feel full. The neonicotinoid, when the insects, in this case the grub worms, would feed, it would make them feel full, they would stop feeding, and then they would die. Some of the newer chemistries work the same way. They basically disrupt the way that the grub worm system operates. All right, another thing to consider. Let's say that you miss your grub worm preventative and you're noticing that you've got damage coming up. So that's gonna be typically over here. You're gonna notice that in September right? Or October, depending, you know, if your lawn's been brown from the summer, um, what's been going on, how, how other, what kind of other problems there might be. But either way, that's typically when you're going to find them. At this point, it's too late for a preventative. So you have to put down a curative and a curative will kill within 24 hours. Doesn't matter really. Just get what's at the store that's labeled to kill grub worms within 24 hours and other insects. That's what you're going to want. It's not going to repair the damage, but it will keep the damage from getting any worse. And then you'll have to do some seeding in the spring, of which I can link to a video below that I did there. Okay, so if you are gonna apply a grub worm treatment to your lawn, I don't want you to use one that's got fertilizer mixed into it. Because it's just gonna be extra synthetic nitrogen that we don't need in the lawn, especially if you're on one of my programs. So what I encourage you to do is go to your professional landscape center. I like John Deere landscapes, for example, but wherever the pros in the area buy their products, that's where you need to go and ask them for a granular product that has grub worm control only. If you can't find a grub only treatment, at one of your local landscape supply centers or they won't sell to you, then this is an opportunity for you to call a professional company and ask them for a grub treatment. They'll typically do it liquid if they can or granular, but they will have grub worm only treatment. So this might be something you hire out. By the way, Jake and I were just talking. These lawns look horrible, don't they? Yeah. They're just all dried out. What are we going to do about that? Try and get it down as much water as we can. Yeah? Can You're going to try to water your way through it? Mm-hmm. How many, how many times did you water this week already? Um, three. Did you really? Mm -hmm. All right. Well, I'm letting mine go, as you know. Yeah. It's hard for me to do. 